Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Rest on Mod Daisy with a part two video. Yeah, what you're looking at right here is a, a Daisy Model 155 that rolled into the shop and it, it didn't work. Our previous video, we discovered that the uh, air tube assembly had snapped off and was broken, so that had to be replaced. And that would mean that seals would have to be replaced also. Um, we've done all that work, run a series of tests on the gun in various configurations and discovered that she's a pretty peppy little puppy. Uh, we started out with uh, packing it up with a Red Rider mainspring to see what it would do with the standard issue Red Rider mainspring. And it's pretty, pretty bleak. Uh, ten shot average of that is about 219 feet a second with a new seal set and an overbore air tube. So not the greatest, not the worst. If the gun's primarily going to be used for a small child, then maybe this is a good choice. But if it's an adult shooter, I think probably more power would be required. Now, as you may recall from the first video, the factory mainspring was in unusually good condition. So we ran some more tests with uh, the factory mainspring and overbore air tube new seal sets. And the gun was uh, with the factory shot tube, which is currently mounted in the gun, uh, was running about oh, 250 feet a second. When we pulled out the factory shot tube and replaced it with a Model 25 shot tube, that jumped up to around 298. And when we uh, did the same test with the Model 25 shot tube, uh, it rounded up to a little bit higher than that, got into actual super thumper territory, not super thumper, but thumper territory with a high recorded speed of 333 feet a second. So I think the best combination of parts for this gun is to go with the Model 25 shot tube, the factory mainspring and overbore air tube. Now one of the things we did do on the first video, we noted that the compression seal was totally tight. And unlike a lot of these leather seals, if you can get one of these leather seals that's a little bit better in terms of uh, what's size of the hole here, you can usually have pretty good success with knocking them out of the gun with just a, a, uh, a standard stick, you know, a, a 7 16th diameter stick. What we usually use for the job here at the shop is this little piece of brass pipe. And that's uh, small enough to fit inside the aperture of the uh, abutment washer, but big enough to grab some of the abutment seal and kick it out without too much trouble. But in the case of this particular gun, obviously that wasn't going to happen. So what I did first was I got after it with my handy dandy tool that I've built to clean up leather abutment seal sits and a washer, abutment washer, which is basically just a wooden stick with a piece of uh, Scotch-Brite stuck on it. And normally this works pretty well if there's not a lot of residue left in. But in this particular gun, you'll see that it, it cupped on me, but it wouldn't come clean from the walls. So that was an issue that had to be resolved. So we scattered around the shop, we took a look, and we hey, found we had some half-inch copper pipe. So we modified the half-inch copper pipe with a uh, modest cutting surface. And then we uh, soaked this thing in situ as it was sitting right here on the uh, in the gun's receiver with oil overnight to get it good and wet. And then inserted this in the back of the receiver and gently kind of kind of turned it around until we felt some movement. Now at that point in time, it was possible to withdraw this first tool and this rascal just fell the hell out. It was quite nice, very convenient, worked well. Nice. Now, the sad part was when I took a peek down inside the bore, uh, on your abutment washer, there'll be two metal flaps that uh, pinch it in place. And there was still some leather crud that was built up between those two flaps. The, uh, this tool was not successful in getting to it because we didn't actually punch all the way through our leather, remnants of our leather seal. So we didn't scrub and clean that. Well, the only thing to do at that point in time is grab another piece of pipe and build a tool that will get in between those two tabs. And that way you can get the rest of the leather seal out because you really need to get that as clean as you can for the synthetic seal to have a hope of sticking and staying put. So it's a fiddly bit job to build these, but it's not all that hard. You just need a couple of pieces of copper pipe. Probably could do it with PVC electrical pipe, but I don't think the cutting surfaces would be as durable as these copper pipes gonna be. Make them about 18 inches long, foot and a half long, so that you got plenty of room to insert and rotate. And when you're doing this kind of stuff inside, it's copper, it's softer than steel, you really can't hurt anything, but there's no reason to get crazy. It's just get in there, get a little bite on it until you feel it moving and pull it out and 
tap the rascal out. Then you're good to go after you've cleaned your, your sections between the um, retaining tabs to go ahead and install the new composite seals. Anyway, get the gun back together. She's running fine. I am going to uh, pull the uh, Phillips screws that we use for installation ballistics testing because it's just easier to get in and get out than the factory screws. But the factory screws themselves are not in bad shape. These are originals, so they'll be reinstalled in the gun before it heads back to uh, Fort Home, along with uh, the broken bits and pieces that uh, <laughs> we got with the gun as well, and in case the guy gets, you know, you know, nostalgic about this was my old leather seal. Maybe you could make a nose ring out of that. I don't know. Okay. Probably don't not. Go that far with Probably it. not. Well, that's all we've got for you today, kids. You can make fairly inexpensive tools to get leather seals out without a hell of a lot of trouble and um, get these old war horses back up and running. Over 300 feet a second on this little rascal, a 155. Now, vintage on it, kind of debatable. Uh, let's take a look at that because I did get a comment in the previous video. I have to agree that that is probably a post-46 roll stamp. The um, pre-war roll stamps were a little bit more decorative than this, but the gun, according to the Cornell University publication on chronology of Daisy models, shows this gun being initially produced in 1931, interrupted by the war in 1941, resumed production in 1946. But I don't have anything else I can cite that says that specifically. Would like to get a copy of the old Daisy Bible. Boy, that would be nice. But that's all we've got for you today. This is Shane Bruce with Rest of My Daisy, signing off.